Well, hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite movie from every year that I've been alive. So I got this idea from Jeff from the channel Films at Home, make sure to check him out. I don't know if anybody else has done a video like this, but I got the idea from him. So yeah, I'm going to be taking you from 1999, yes I'm born in 1999, all the way to 2022. So let's get right into it. So first movie on the list in 1999 is The Matrix. Now The Matrix was the first ever R-rated movie I ever saw in my life and I actually saw this movie when I was fairly young and my parents just kind of let me watch this movie because I don't know I guess the only bad word in there is shit and like there's a bunch of like gunshots but you know as a kid I was really focused on the visual effects and the action sequences like I was so amazed by everything like I even watched it behind the scenes but I think I, the more I watched this as I grew older you know the story is like really meaningful and it's like really something special for, for the time it, it was made at. Next up on the list, in the year 2000, we have the first X-Men. Now, X-Men really changed the game when it came to superhero movies. I think it might be the first, like, superhero movie that came out in the 2000s. I'm not, I don't know if it's, if there was anything else, but X-Men just stars an ensemble cast with Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, Halle Berry, James Marsden. Like, it's just such an amazing cast. And also, Ian McKellen as Magneto. Like, the best part about all the X-Men movies is Magneto himself, literally my favorite character in the X-Men universe. Next up for 2001, we have The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. No surprise there, it's my favorite movie of all time. Now, I remember watching Fellowship of the Ring countless and countless of times, like went through that VHS multiple times, it was crazy. Just like the previous movie with X-Men, you get an ensemble cast here as well. You just remember every character after you finish watching this movie, every, everybody is so iconic in this movie. You got Gandalf, you got Legolas, you got Frodo, you got Gimli, you got Legolas, I already said Legolas, Aragorn. And I definitely think that Fellowship of the Ring Extended Edition, yes, you, that's the only real version of these movies. Fellowship of the Ring is like, has always been my favorite. I think I love the way it ends on a very like dark tone. And I know the second one also does, but I just love how everything's just like kind of like broken like well yeah fellowship the breaking of the fellowship yes <laughs> so next up in 2002 we have the first ever spider-man directed by sam raimi so the first ever physical movie that i had was spider-man 2002 on vhs so that's pretty cool i used to watch it so much that i remember literally every freaking line in this movie and yeah even as a kid i would like pretend to be spider-man i would like crawl <laughs> on the floor to me. <laughs> Next up in 2003, we have The Lord of the Rings Return of the King. And I'm not gonna sit here and talk about Lord of the Rings again, but it is really special for me because this was the first ever movie that I ever saw in theaters. So yeah, it has a special place for me. And yeah, that's why it's, at, uh, it's my favorite of 2003. Next up in 2004, we have Spider-Man 2. I know I'm just naming a lot of like franchise type. Look, look, listen, when I was a kid, I used to watch a lot of these franchise movies. This is, that's all I watched. Okay, so of course it's it it's makes sense that I would name like, you know, superhero movies, fantasy movies and stuff, but <laughs> you'll see later on the list I'm like way more open about different types of movies. But yeah, Spider-Man 2, what can I say? It's it's a masterpiece, literally the best Spider-Man movie ever. Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst. Next up in 2005, we have Batman Begins. I love Batman Begins. It's literally one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. I'm not even sure if is better than Spider-Man 2. Like those those two are neck and neck for me. Like Batman Begins has been my childhood. I literally got the action figures, the, the Batmobile as well. Oh my God. But I remember as a kid loving this movie so much because of how different it was than the previous interpretations of Batman. It was just a more serious, dark and realistic take on the character. Next up in 2006, we have Casino Royale. Daniel Craig's first movie as James Bond. Oh my God, this movie rocks. It's literally the most emotional and vulnerable portrayal of Bond and it's great to see a refreshing take on the character especially in 2006 when before that we got a lot of like campy you know James Bond movies but this was the the first one where it was really like whoa like you were like shocked to see something like this uh, for a James Bond movie. Now next up on the list is 2007 and I don't really have a favorite movie of 2007 like I have a lot of movies that I love but yeah, 2007 is one of those years when I don't really have like a 10 out of 10 movie, but I'm gonna go with Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, cause why not? I guess it's special because this was the first ever Harry Potter movie I ever saw in theaters. The first four movies, I only watched them like at home on DVD, VHS, but Order of the Phoenix was the first Harry Potter movie I saw in theaters. And yeah, it was a really fun time. And I remember that summer very well. 
good memories and nostalgia. There you go. Next up for 2008, we have no surprise, The Dark Knight. This was a phenomenal movie. This was not even just a Batman movie. This was a crime drama just with Batman in it. I think upon rewatch, The Dark Knight is so, so good. And you start to figure out all the hidden meanings uh, that Christopher Nolan was trying to put in into this movie. And it's just so meaningful. Like it's really powerful stuff in here. And of course we cannot forget about Heath Ledger's amazing performance as the Joker. Iconic stuff. That interrogation scene is phenomenal. Next up in 2009, we have Avatar. Avatar was the first movie I ever saw in 3D. Uh, such great memories. I literally remember sitting at the very, very front row. The one where I'm like, like staring at, at, the, at the screen like this. But yeah, I remember Avatar very well. Just some great nostalgic moments. Like, the thing about me is that I'm putting a lot of these movies based on like sentimental value and nostalgia. And that's just how I roll with them. And of course, rewatchability. And of course, Avatar fits the bill for 2009 because it was such a, you know, a thing back then. You would talk about your friends like, oh, have you seen Avatar and stuff? And like, oh, and I even played the video game on the Wii. Next up in 2010. Now, this is the year where I was becoming more open about seeing different types of movies like dramas, romance, rom-coms. Uh, horror, whatever the crap. And 2010 was the year I discovered The Town. Now, The Town was really inspirational in a way. It kind of opened my eyes uh, when it comes to like acting because I have never seen a movie with an ensemble cast that was just like, it was really all about acting. And I was really impressed with literally every actor in this movie, Ben Affleck, uh, Jeremy Renner, Blake Lively, Rebecca Hall, John Hamm, like this cast was so, so good. And this movie didn't even have a lot of action scenes. I, I believe there's only three like bank robbery scenes, or you could call them the action scenes of the movie, but this movie is essentially a crime drama and just scenes about people talking and telling stories and stuff. And it really develops the characters in that way and I love that. Next up for 2011 we have The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo directed by David Fincher. Oh my god this was the first movie where I was really looking at every technical aspect in this movie. The cinematography, the sound design, like the score by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. Oh my god. This was the movie that really made me fall in love with the directing style of David Fincher. Yes I have seen The Social Network in 2010 which was also amazing but the girl with the giant tattoo oh my god i was literally looking at every frame and just going like wow 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 like every shot of this movie looks beautiful and meticulously crafted and it's perfect now 2012 is one of those years where i have no idea how to pick one movie what which, which one is my favorite because like these two movies i just love them so much so and that is the dark knight rises and skyfall the dark knight rises is a perfect conclusion to the dark knight trilogy and that ending i love it so much i just love it how it calls back to the story that alfred said at the beginning of the movie and then you have skyfall in terms of cinematography this is the best looking movie of all time i roger deakins knocked it out of the park for the cinematography in skyfall he does not get enough praise for the cinematography in this. I know he's done 1917 and that's beautiful, but Skyfall is probably like my favorite looking movie of all time. Now for 2013, this is a very different type of movie than any movie that I've named so far. And this is going to be about time. Now, I don't know what happened during this year. This is like the first ever like romantic comedy, that, which has some drama in it, but that I would watch actually constantly. And there was just something so special and endearing about this movie. I do like that the first half of this movie starts like as a typical rom-com, but I think in the second half, that's where things get really good with Bill Nye and Donald Gleason, their father-son relationship and stuff. So yeah, if you haven't seen About Time, definitely check this out. Now for the year 2014, we have The Theory of Everything. I'm probably one of the few people in this entire world that would put this movie as their favorite of 2014. And also 2014 was actually probably is my favorite year of movies. You know, we had like Gone Girl, we had Grand Budapest Hotel, we had Nightcrawler. Th that year was was really good. But what makes this movie so rewatchable for me is the performances of Eddie Redmayne, Felicity Jones, and everybody else. And of course, the beautiful soundtrack by Johan Johansson. I listen to that soundtrack all the time. Like it's one of my favorite scores ever. And I would say I love this movie also for the same feeling that About Time gives me, like just a relaxing feeling every time I pop this in. Now, 2015 is also one of those years where I do not have a favorite movie. I would probably say the one that I rewatched the most is Ant-Man, the first one. And I love the first Ant-Man. I just love how grounded it is. And it's not like a super like over the top 
CGI fest Marvel movie. It's, it kept the story very simple, centered around Scott Lang, played by the amazing Paul Rudd. And I would say this is one of the funniest MCU movies ever. Like this movie is actually hilarious. Now for the year 2016, we have Sing Street. Oh my God, I love this movie. I went into this movie kind of like, um, I don't know if it's gonna be good. It doesn't have any famous actors, but I do know that this movie is directed by John Carney who did Begin Again, which I really love. So yeah, I wasn't expecting much from this movie. And then when the movie ended, with the song by Adam Levine playing. And I was just like, whoa, this movie is actually making me emotional. What the hell? It's essentially a beautiful coming of age story of just some, some kids in Ireland who just wanna make, do something creative. And yeah, I find movies like that very inspiring to me. Now for the year 2017, we have The Disaster Artist. Now a big reason for why I love The Disaster Artist is because I am a big fan of The Room, a masterpiece of a movie. Like it's just, it's out of this world. And I'm serious, The Room is really one of the most unique experiences I've ever had with a movie. So watching The Disaster Artist, um, directed by James Franco, and of course starring him as Tommy Wiseau, um, I was really surprised by the emotion in this movie. And not only is this movie super hilarious, but I was so surprised about how much heart this movie has between the friendship of James Franco and Dave Franco's character, Tommy and Greg Sestero. Now for the year 2018, we have A Star Is Born, directed by Bradley Cooper. Not only was I a fan of the acting, the ensemble cast, oh my God, Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga, Sam Elliott, just a fantastic cast, but the music is so good. Like I literally love every song. I listened to the soundtrack, many times but not only that this was a fantastic directorial debut from bradley cooper like this movie looks beautiful the cinematography by matthew libatik wow and this is a very heavy movie like once the movie ends you're like whoa like they did this like i didn't expect this movie to hit me that much you know <laughs> now for the year 2019 we have avengers endgame this was the culmination of 10 years of mcu movies like i think avengers endgame is the most hyped i've ever been for a movie but not only is this a really fun superhero comic book movie. The way they wrapped up some character story was very well done specifically for Captain America and Iron Man. And it was also great to see some scenes where they went back in time to previous MCU movies. And it kind of like made you like reminisce about the previous movies and just made you feel nostalgic. Now for the year 2020, every movie basically got delayed that year. So there was not that many movies that came out in 2020. But the best that I've seen that year was Tenet directed by Christopher Nolan. I don't think I fully understand this movie even three years later. But every time I do watch it though, I'm mostly just amazed by the technical aspect of this movie, like the cinematography, the score by Ludwig Göransson. But yeah, I wouldn't say this is Chris Nolan's best movie, but it was definitely the best movie that I saw in 2020. Now for the year 2021, there was not that many movies that came out that year either, but I'm gonna go with Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I wouldn't say that Man of Steel and Batman v Superman are like amazing movies, but I really, really do love Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I think this is the definitive Justice League movie, but I really do love the tone they were able to bring in Zack Snyder's Justice League. There were some serious and dark moments, but there was also enough of comedy to add some levity to the film. And of course, Tom Hockenborg's soundtrack really adds a different touch to a comic book movie, like his type of music, you don't really find in any other comic book movie. And I feel like it works with the dark and serious tone of the DCEU. Now for the year 2022, I don't think I've ever talked about a movie as much as this one on my channel, but it's Top Gun Maverick, obviously. By the time I'm making this video, I've probably seen Top Gun Maverick maybe like 11 times or something. Oh my God, I'm fucking crazy. But seriously, Top Gun Maverick has, is literally becoming like one of the most rewatchable movies ever for me. Like it's the movie that just makes me smile literally every time I watch it. And I literally went through a phase with this movie last year. Like I literally bought aviator glasses. I was listening to the soundtrack in the car all the time. And of course watched it four times in the theater in the summer. Like I, I will always remember that phase. And let me correct myself, Topic of Maverick is not a phase, it was an experience. And it's still going today because I'm still watching this movie. Like I literally watched it just last week, I'm not even joking. So yeah, those are my favorite movies from every year that I've been alive from 1999 to 2022. If you wanna make your list of your favorite movie from every year that you've been alive, let me know in the comments, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.